we thought it might be a good idea to revisit the topic of uh, text compression, which was visited for the first time in the original compression video on the Computer File channel. Some of you in the comments made the point, to which I must plead guilty, that in trying to explain things, I perhaps oversimplified a little. To take the discussion on and make some more general points about uh, text in general, how compressible it is, what are good and bad ways to do it, and uh, how it has all become really quite big business over the past 30 odd years since it became commonly available. Well, the two names we ought to write down to start with on text compression are two gentlemen who wrote a classic paper on it called Ziv and Lempel. But most people, certainly in the English speaking world, seem to find it easier to say Lempel Ziv rather than <laughs> Ziv Lempel. And so very widely, very widely now it's known as the LZ77 method. Let's say we've got something like this, the computer file channel handles computer topics. In my original explanation I put to you the idea of having a dictionary of well-known words and buzz phrases up at the top of the file with pointers to where all these words occurred and if in doubt use the pointers for repeats of certain words. Well <clears throat> the way it's actually done in practice is not dissimilar in principle to that but the details are even more clever in terms of achieving maximum compression, cutting down file size and so on. What a typical LZ compressor will do is it will work its way through all of the text that you need to compress and will actually look for sequences of characters that recur over and over again and will attempt to reuse them as much as it possibly can. It doesn't overtly make a dictionary entry by putting them somewhere special but just by leaving the strings of text in place it can reuse stuff in place. Here we've got the word computers, eight characters, but the compressor could remember that it has seen that string of characters already as a subset of the string computer file. The thought immediately occurs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters are identical here to what they are at the beginning of that word. Can't we use that in some way and cut down the length of this? And what the Lempel-Ziv method does is it uses <coughs> a pointer and in that composite pointer it points back to where the phrase first occurred and it also notes down how long the phrase was at that point. Now I'm going to denote these pointers with a notation that looks like this. I'll call it J and L. J being the jump, it's a relative jump. How many characters back would I need to go to encounter this word computer somewhere else? And when I do get back to that character position in the file, then how long will the string of characters be? Now I must emphasize if you look inside a Lempel Ziv file you will not see pointed brackets let alone numbers or characters here. This is just my notation to try and illustrate what is going on. In actual fact this pointer might well be at its very simplest let's say it's 16 bits. Two 8-bit bytes if you like. The details say it's a little bit more complicated than this even. In two bytes, I might be able to do some magic here that will replace eight bytes in the word computer with a two byte composite pointer of this sort. Now what I have to do is to say, right, where did computer occur relative to where it is now? Now this is just a single space here, although it might not look like it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll assume there isn't a, a new line here, but there is a character. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. A relative backward jump of 30 characters. There was, we'll put a little partition here, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight byte word. So there we go. Those numbers, those 
integers are cheerfully representable within 8 bits each. So I could take out computer here and replace it with, in my notation, 30, 8. Thinking around it a little bit, it should be pretty clear. You've got a trade-off. If we're going to allow a total of 16 bits to take the jump and also the length of the string you are pointing at. Now you can trade off that internal boundary because 8 bits, 2 to the power 8 is 256. So on either side of this notional divide, you've got the ability to hold integers from 0 to 255. Now, in actual fact, there are not many situations, in Western European languages at least, where you get massively long words repeated again and again and again. So the attitude taken in many practical implementations of this tends to be, let's keep the pointed at string fairly short. So if it is a long word, we might have to do a few of these pointers, but better to have a long jump back possibility. That means that you can keep reusing words up to, well what, let's say we do a partition like this, 4 bits here, 12 bits here, 2 to the power 12 is 4096. Note to those of you that keep writing in on comments saying, hey professor, what should I do? I'm just at high school and I want to do computer science at university. What's the best preparation? My statement would be, learn your powers of two. Backwards, upside down, inside out, learn your powers of two. Oh, and while you're at it, learn your 16 times table, so you'll be very quick at doing hexadecimal. I was forced to learn my 16 times table at school, not because we did hexadecimal, but because in those days, there were 16 ounces in a pound of sugar or whatever. So 116 is 16, 216 is 32, 316 is 48, and so on. It's worth it. Anyway. What we're saying there is that 2 to the power 12 is 4096, 2 to the power 4 is 16. You can encode in here a string that is anything, if you like, from 1 to 16 bytes long, but you can have a relative backward jump, 4096 characters. That is a pretty good trade-off. What will happen, of course, is that if your pointer back to the substring computer gets to be more than 4096, um, characters away, then your encoder will have to remember and put in its mental dictionary a new instance of the word computer that can be referred back to. So imagine this happening not just for words like computer, but for words like channel, for handles, for substrings of handles called hand and so on. All the time the thing is preparing in a sense to make a dictionary entry of anything that seems suitable so that it can be referred back to again and again and again. So what one's saying here is that even with this simple model you are being able to replace a multi-byte entity by a two-byte pointer. probabilities, 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 the three Ps. Getting your probability model right for the material you are coping with is the heart of getting a really successful compression. And the web browser looks at that and goes, that is JavaScript code, I'm gonna run that! <laughs>